Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Every song that I sing, I'll sing to you, and I hope I can bring you a smile or two. Dennis Day is brought to you by Palm Olive Soap and Palm Olive Shave Creams. Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Palm Olive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing A Little Bird Told Me. A little bird told me that you love me And I believe that you do This little bird also told me I was falling Falling for no one but you There's no use denying I might as well confess Of all the girls I know, dear I'm sure I love you best A little girl told me I'll be happy And I believe that it's true A little bird told me we'll be married and that ain't fed at 82. Bird, bird. This little bird also told me when we marry, we'll have a pretty cottage not too far. Oh, fenced in like a movie star. Great Dane Pup will call him Ace. Lying there by the fireplace. Even a nursery painter blue. Oh! This and Social Security to a little bird Told me I'll be happy And I believe that it's true Yes, I believe that it's true That's strictly for the birds <laughs> Men, if you like oceans of rich, thick, moisture-soaked lather, try the new, different Palmolive Lather Way to Shave, a way that means smoother, more comfortable shaves for three men out of every four. Yes, the new Palmolive Lather Shave Cream Way brings smoother, more comfortable shaves to three men out of every four. It's a fact, men, not a promise. 1,251 men tried the new Palmolive Lather Way to Shave, and no matter how they shaved before, 81% reported beards easier to cut. 76% said less razor pull. 71% said closer shaves. 80% smoother feeling skin. And three men out of every four reported smoother, more comfortable shaves the Palm Olive Lather Shave Cream way. Here's all you do. Wash your face with soap and water. Rinse. Soap your face thoroughly again. Do not rinse. Brush Palm Olive Lather upward into beard to get the full benefit of Palm Olive Lather Shave Cream's beard conditioning effect. Then shave. That's all. But you be the judge. Get Palm Olive Lather Shave Cream and try the new, different Palm Olive Lather way to shave. Remember, it's proved. Proved to give smoother, more comfortable shaves to three men out of every four. At the dawn of a new year, there are many of us who sit down with a pencil and paper and make a list of the mistakes we have made during the past 12 months. Our young hero, Dennis Day, however, has no need of such a written list. Each year, he can make the same mistakes all over again just from memory. <laughs> Nevertheless, each January 1st finds him looking forward to the year ahead with glowing confidence and supreme optimism. And 1949, as he talks to his girlfriend, Mildred Anderson, seems to be no exception. I'm telling you, Mildred, this is going to be my year. Nothing can stop me. I'm going to have nerve and push and drive. Good for you, Dennis. From now on, I'm going to be afraid of nothing on this earth, human, animal, or your mother. <laughs> That's 
the way to talk. I just know something wonderful is going to happen to me in 1949, Mildred. Something big. You really do, Dennis? Sure. I hear there's a move on foot to increase the unemployment insurance. <laughs> well, I just hope you won't be collecting it too much longer. Good morning. Oh, hi, Mother. Oh, Happy New Year, Mrs. Anderson. It certainly is. I have some news for you, Dennis. I've gotten you a job. And a good one. Didn't I tell you, Mildred? Didn't I say 1949 would be my year to clean up? It certainly will. You're going to be a stable boy at the Mayfair Riding Academy. <laughs> you, you mean around horses? Oh, my gosh, I couldn't go near a horse. Horses scare me to death. Oh, nonsense. Oh, no, ma'am. You see, as a child, I had a frightening experience with a horse. I was born on one. <laughs> you were born on a horse? Yes, ma'am. My mother was a bareback rider in the circus, and she couldn't get the day off. <laughs> You know that isn't true. Okay, so it isn't true, but I'd say anything to get out of being around horses, and I won't be either. Dennis, you owe me six weeks back rent. This job pays $28 a week, and you're going to take it. Oh, yeah? Is this a free country or isn't it? Has a man rights here or hasn't he? Nobody in this country's gonna tell Dennis. me what... Dennis! <laughs> you're going to take that job or else. Do you understand? Yes, Commissar. <laughs> That's more like it. I told him you'd report to the stables in an hour. See that you're there. Oh, gosh, Mildred, this is awful. What am I going to do? Oh, Dennis, don't carry on so. What harm can a horse do you? After all, they're almost human. So what? Humans scare the daylights out of me, too. <laughs> but, Dennis, if you just... Oh, hello, Daddy. Good morning, children. <laughs> what are you two looking so glum about? Oh. Mother just got Dennis a job down at the Mayfair Riding Academy, and he's scared to death of horses. Oh, come now, Dennis. Surely you're not a coward. Yes, I am, and I can prove it, too. <laughs> but, Dennis, horses have been man's best friends down through the ages. Why, in the old days, they were our only means of transportation. Why, where would your grandfather have been if it weren't for horses? Probably still alive. They hung him for stealing one. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go down to the stables with you and teach you all about horses. How's that? Well, what good will that do? Well, when a person gets to know something and learns everything about it, he isn't afraid of it anymore. Gee, I don't know. You know your wife pretty well, and you're still... Never mind. <laughs> Just get your hat. Okay. <laughs> Must you get so close, Mr. Anderson? Oh, don't be so nervous, Dennis. A fine animal like this won't hurt you. Boy, that's what I call real horse flesh. You expected to find some other kind on him? <laughs> no, no. Ooh, he's barking at us again. <laughs> he isn't barking. <laughs> Are you horsey? Whoa. Steady, boy. Help! Hey, quick, get me out of here. He's turning his motor on. Oh, nonsense, Dennis. Why don't you come over here and pet him? Pet him? Who? Me, me, me? Sure. Now, just put your hand alongside his head here. Are you crazy? That's probably where he keeps his teeth. <laughs> oh, Dennis. Hey, let's get out of here, huh, Mr. Anderson? No. Now, if you listen a minute, I'll teach you all about these animals. I'm a real expert. Oh, all right. Now, look over there on that wall. See that list of instructions for stable boys? Read it off, item by item, and I'll explain it. Okay. First it says, fetlocks must be brushed carefully every morning. Gosh, what are fetlocks? Dennis, think a minute. What do you brush every morning? My teeth? Uh, certainly. Fetlocks are horses' teeth. <laughs> oh, I see. Sure, all us real horsemen know that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> what, what else is on the list there? Uh, all burrs and mud must be cleaned out of the mane. Well, naturally, you've got to take care of his mane. His mane what? <laughs> Dennis, use your head. If it picks up burrs and mud, it must be hair of some sort. Isn't that so? Yeah, I guess so. Well, then this must be his mane right here, right? Yeah, gee, right where you'd expect to find his tail. <laughs> sure, it's a cinch when you're an expert. Oh, quiet, Rover, quiet. <laughs> Say, you don't... <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Uh -huh. 
You don't suppose he's sick or something, do you? He keeps making that noise and scratching the ground with his front paw. Well, it looks all right to me, but there's a bottle of horse liniment right here if you think he's ailing. Is that good? Oh, it's the greatest stuff in the world. Here, I'll pour some in the bucket. Oh, my gosh, Mr. Anderson, look. Here comes one of the members. Oh, say, do you know who that is, Dennis? Huh? Leopold J. Cabot, the millionaire. I'll hide in the stall. You're supposed to be alone. Yeah, okay. Good morning, young man. My horse ready? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Cabot. All set. Here you are. That? That's a filly. Oh, really? Gee, I'm sorry. They told me it was a horse. <laughs> I mean, it's a female horse. Where's the one I usually ride? Huh? Oh, why, yeah. Oh, well, never mind. I'll take this one. Has she got an easy bit? I don't know. She never bited me. <laughs> What are you, a new groom? Oh, no, sir, I'm not even engaged. <laughs> okay, I give up. Yes, sir. Uh, shall I help you climb aboard your horse? <laughs> I can mount her without any help from you, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. There we are. Ah, favoring that left foreleg. I wonder if she could be a little lame. Oh, I thought she acted a little funny, too. Hey, wait a minute. I'll fix it right up. Here, horsey, drink up all the nice medicine in this bucket. There, that's a good girl. Come on, finish it all now. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, easy, whoa. Easy. Hold, hold it. it. Hey, hold, hold it. it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold hold it. it. I can't hold Ooh. it. She's running away. Help! Whoa. whoa! Dennis, what is it? The horse. Look, it's running away with Mr. Cabot on him. Come on. Good gracious, that horse is headed right for the lake. I know. Hurry. They're at the edge of the water. Look, the horse stopped. Yeah, but Mr. Cabot didn't. Help! Hold on, Mr. Cabot. Hold on. Here I come. Good boy, Dennis. Keep going. Ah, you got him. That's it. Now drag him in. Fine. You did it, Dennis. Uh, <coughs> young man, I, I don't know how to thank you. You saved my life. Oh, it was nothing. I just swam out and... Oh, my gosh, I just remembered something. I can't swim. <laughs> We'll continue our day in the life of Dennis Day in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's Dennis to sing A Slow Boat to China. There is no verse to this song Cause I don't want to wait a moment too long To say that I love to get you On a slow boat to China City two hours ago saved the life of Leopold J. Cabot, well-known millionaire and philanthropist. Oh, Mother, did you hear that? Shh, quiet. Mr. Cabot was thrown from his horse into Weaverville Lake, and Day, who was employed by the Mayfair Riding Academy, jumped in and saved him. Mr. Cabot is well-known for his lavish gifts and donations to charity, and there's little doubt that a small fortune will be bestowed on young Day. Why the horse bolted so suddenly remains a mystery that so far... Oh, Mother, did you hear? Isn't it wonderful? Oh, it's the most thrilling announcement I've ever heard in my life, Mildred. Oh, yes, imagine hearing that Dennis saved a man's life. Well, that and down first. 
further where the meat was. <laughs> oh, now, Mother, that's no way to... Oh, hi, Mildred. Mrs. Anderson. Danny! Boy, have I got a story for you. Wouldn't you hear what happened to me today? Oh, we can't wait to hear it, Dennis. No, let's hear. Well, it was this way. You see, That's I... That's wonderful. <laughs> How much is he going to give you? Gosh, it didn't take me long to tell it, did it? <laughs> oh, Dennis, we're so proud of you. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Mil Mildred, would you mind leaving Dennis and me alone for a moment? I want to tell him in private how proud I am. Oh, well, certainly, Mother. I'll see you later, Dennis. Dennis. Yes, ma'am? In the past, you and I've had words, haven't we? Oh, yes, ma'am. When people talk, there isn't much else they can use, I guess. <laughs> now, I mean harsh words, Dennis. But you know that deep down underneath, I love you. Have you ever doubted it? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, you silly. Just because I insult you and order you out of the house and once I throw you downstairs, you don't think I like you? I'm too sensitive, huh? <laughs> well, of course. I adore you, Dennis. Now tell me something. When you saved this man's life this morning, what did he say? Help. <laughs> no, I mean after you saved him. Did he mention anything about a reward by any chance? Oh, yes, ma'am. In fact, I'm supposed to go over to his house this afternoon. He said he'd like to talk to me about it. You dull, you! But I told him I was very happy to save his life, and I didn't want to accept anything for a little old thing like that, so he should forget Dennis the whole... Day. There was a dirty word in there somewhere? <laughs> No, but don't you see that this is the biggest opportunity of our lives? Our lives? Well, I got you that job at the stable. Don't you think I'm entitled to something, too? Well, yes, ma'am, sure. In a way, I guess you are. Well, that's better. Not that I want to be a hog about it. How much is strictly up to you, and whatever you say is fine with me. Well, uh, what would you say to 10%? Fair. <laughs> well, suppose we split the reward in half, Mrs. Anderson. You take 50%, okay? Oh, no, Dennis, really, that I couldn't do. Well, then suppose you take 40%. Well, uh, try me on 50 just once again. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Anderson, we split 50-50. Only, of course, he may not give me much after all. Oh, yes, he will. You see, I've got a great little idea. Huh? Well, what do you mean? I'm going over there with you this afternoon, and we're going dressed in rags. If he thinks I'm your poor old mother and we're starving to death, he'll shell out plenty. Starving to death? But how could you be starving to death with that big... Oh. <laughs> well, I guess you can wear a coat. <laughs> Gee, what a house, huh, Mrs. Anderson? I have a feeling we'll have one like it very soon, Dennis. <laughs> uh, do the tatters in my dress show plainly enough? Oh, yes, ma'am, but the Pillsbury label on your shawl is upside down again. <laughs> well, I don't think it matters. Gee, I wish these old pants I'm wearing didn't have so many holes in them. Oh, stop complaining. Okay, but I sure hope Mr. Cabot has warm chairs. <laughs> Better ring the bell again. Oh, wait, I hear someone coming now. Oh, good. Look hungry. Well, Dennis, come in, dear boy, do. I'm glad to see you. Oh, thanks, Mr. Cabot. I'd like you to meet my poor old beat-up mother. <laughs> <laughs> She's a relative of mine. <laughs> How do you do, Mrs. Day? Oh, uh, forgive the way I'm shivering, Mr. Cabot. The wind these winter days just whips through these rags to my poor old bones. They're right underneath her skin, you know. <laughs> Yes, I noticed she wasn't wearing a coat. Here, let me help you off with yours, Dennis. There we are. Thank you, Mr. Cabot. I better take the sleeves, too. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, Mrs. Day, it's a privilege to know you. You certainly have a fine boy there. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cabot. Tell me, Dennis, what about your father? Oh, we couldn't afford one. <laughs> What's that? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, my boy gets a little lightheaded at times, Mr. Cabot. Uh, malnutrition, you know. Good heavens, are you that poor? Oh, I haven't had any anything but a few crusts of bread for three months. That's why I look so awful. My gracious. And your mother? She always looks that way. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Lord. He, he, he means I've always had trouble. Oh, my. I had no idea you were such poor people. Oh, we're pitiful cases. <laughs> yes. Every penny the dentist has been able to earn has gone for medicine for me. Yeah, our house is just loaded with Dr. Brown's celery tonic. <laughs> my goodness, so you're a sick woman, Mrs. Day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Uh, what seems to be the nature of your illness? Uh, why, uh, well, it's, uh, I've got a... a softening uh, of the spine. Softening of the spine? Yeah, she has to take starch injections. <laughs> <laughs> On days when we can't get starch, we have to lash her through the door so she can stand up straight. Why, I never heard of such a disease before. Oh, you can't get it in this country. We had to send to Europe for it. <laughs> you sent to Europe for a disease? Oh, that was when we had money. I'm afraid what I'm a little... What my boy means, Mr. Cabot, is that I contracted the illness while traveling abroad with my husband. That was before he died, of course. Yeah, and he hasn't earned a nickel since. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I don't matter. It's what being poor has done to my boy, Dennis. That's the pity. I had to take him out of school when he was just a child and put him to work. Oh, that is a shame. He showed great promise, too. I was at the head of my class in posture and deep breathing. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad I had this little talk with you and your mother, my boy. I see now that I must be most generous about your reward for saving my life. Uh, generous? Really and truly generous, Mr. Cabot? Several thousand dollars at the very least. Oh, you grand man. Well, I mean, well, I better get back to my sickbed now. I know you two can work out the details together. Goodbye, Mr. Cabot. Goodbye, Mrs. Day. See you later, son. Okay, Mother. Don't forget to stop in at the laundry for your treatment. <laughs> But, Poopsie, we can't afford a new Hudson convertible. Please, won't you tell the man... Tell that... him what? We're loaded. We're dripping with it. <sighs> but, Mother, a new car, a television set, a fur coat... Who cares about money? Oh, I just can't wait for Dennis to come home so I can spread all that lettuce on the floor and play rabbit with it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, happy day. Oh, but golly, Mother, it's... Oh, hello, everybody. Never mind the small talk. Where's the money? Mrs. Anderson. What? Do you have plenty of bobby socks? Bobby socks? Why? Mr. Cabot has given me a four-year college education. According to our agreement, we each get two years. Oh, no! <laughs> Ladies, regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care, doctors prove you too may win a lovelier complexion with palm olive soap. But to win this lovelier complexion, the kind men admire and women envy, you must stop improper cleansing. Instead, use palm olive soap the way doctors advised. Remember, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, advised 1,285 women, many with complexion problems, to use palm olive this way. Some had dry skin, some oily, some coarse looking. Using palm olive soap alone, two out of three won lovelier complexions. Now here's what the doctors advised. Wash your face with palm olive soap, massaging for one minute with palm olive soft lather. This cleansing massage brings your skin palm olive's full beautifying effect. Rinse, do this three times a day for 14 days. It's that simple. But doctors have proved this way, using nothing but palm olive, really works. So forget other beauty care. Use palm olive soap alone for a lovelier complexion. For loveliness all over, use big thrifty bath size palm olive in your tub or shower. Here now is Dennis with the music of Charles Dant and the orchestra singing... Song of Songs. Do you recall that 
night in June when first we met. Do you remember, love, the words we spoke? Have you forgotten all the tender vows we made in the silent magical moon? and I want to wish you all a very happy new year. Next week, tune in to another Dennis Day show brought to you by Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope, and Palmolive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you Kay Dumit's magic blend. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Yes, tonight, you can be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream shampoo. Today, a large part of our hope for world peace depends upon continuing teamwork among Americans of different races and creeds. We must demonstrate to other countries that free men can work together peacefully, that free men can produce a greater quantity of food and goods. Each of us must realize that prejudice of any kind is a danger to national unity. We must guard ourselves and our families from vicious rumors. And most important, we must judge our fellow men by the character of their lives alone. An America that proves to the world that men of different races, religions, and national backgrounds can be united in freedom is also an America that brings a fighting hope and faith in democracy to millions of war-exhausted people everywhere. Listen again next week to Colgate's Hour of Fun, Judy Canova, followed by Dennis Day. And for another great comedy program, hear Blondie next Wednesday evening over your favorite NBC station. This is Vern Smith speaking. Good night. <laughs> Thank you.
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.